from Apple Valley News Now. First alert weather with Chief Meteorologist Josh Colbert. Good Thursday morning. We're still tracking multiple fires across the region, and now we have a new fire on the map. This is the Williams Mine Fire that is technically burning in Skamania County right now in the Gifford Pinchot National Forest, but some of that fire perimeter started to spread into extreme southwestern Yakima County, just to the south of Mount Baker. It's 4,500 acres right now it's 0% contained, and so we'll continue to watch this very closely. This, this is a pretty sparsely populated part of Yakima County, but again, we'll continue to keep tabs on that. We do have this retreat fire that's burning in a much more populated part of Yakima County. This thing's now upwards of 64% contained. So that is the big update that we got yesterday. Certainly some good news there, but still multiple evacuations in place for this level threes and level ones. You can find those listed online at applevalleynewsnow.com. On to the Lone Rock Fire burning in Morrow, Gillum, and Wheeler counties. Didn't get any significant update with this one yesterday. And then the Battle Mountain Complex burning in Morrow and Umatilla counties this one is now up to 43 percent contained so good news in regards to that still multiple evacuations in place for this one though and you can find extensive information on all these fires at applevalleynewsnow.com and i'll show you what this is doing to our air quality coming up on good morning northwest which starts right now straight ahead on good morning northwest a teen accused of gunning down a man in the parking lot of a fast food restaurant that's been on the run since march has been arrested with how police were able to capture him and the latest results from the primary election, what voters are saying about allowing pot shops within West Richland. Good Morning Northwest starts right now. This is Apple Valley News Now. Good Morning Northwest on your side. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us for Good Morning Northwest. I'm Jessica DeLal. And I'm Jill Sperling. It is Thursday, August 8th. And Jessica, I was looking up some international and national days I today. I love when you do that. <laughs> of course, it's fun. And uh, today is actually National Pickleball Day. Have you ever played I've pickleball? I've never played, have you? Same, no. I always okay. say I'm going to, and then I don't. Me too. It looks a lot like tennis. It looks fun, and it looks know. somewhat easy. I don't know. Hmm. It kind of, I don't know. I've never really been a big fan of tennis. I wasn't really good at it. I wasn't so good I at it either. I probably wouldn't football. be good at this. I'm not that athletic, but we're going to have to try it. We'll have to try it Soon. sometime. Yes, <laughs> but we're going to start off with your top stories and starting off with crime news out of Ellensburg. A teen accused of gunning down a man in the parking lot of a fast food restaurant before going into hiding has been arrested. 18 year old Benny Castizo is charged with first degree murder after police say he fatally shot 21 year old Christian Guthrie back in March. This happened in the parking lot lot of a jack-in-the-box restaurant near the CWU campus. Authorities uh, say Castizo's been on the run since then, but was taken into custody Tuesday in Kent after being contacted by law enforcement in a separate incident. Obviously, our citizens were concerned about this person being on the loose. We were concerned about him being on the loose, and so, you know, to, to have another agency, you know, locate him was uh, a sense of relief. Castizo was 17 at the time of the fatal shooting, but authorities say he's been charged as an adult and will be returned to Kittitas County soon. Drivers in Kittitas and Grant counties may be seeing a bigger presence of state troopers on the roads over the next few weeks. The Washington State Patrol is doing emphasis patrols August 9th through August 18th as students return to college. Troopers will be focusing on speeding, distracted driving and DUI. WSP says speeding continues to be the main cause of crashes in the state. And Tri-Cities commuters can expect some delays this morning if traveling along Interstate 182 in Richland. Roadway repairs will be happening today. Crews with the Washington Department of Transportation will be closing lanes between milepost 5 and 7 near George Washington Way and eastbound I-182 from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Drivers should plan to add extra time to their commutes. Turning now to the Washington primary results, we'll take a look at a few local and state races. We're starting off in West Richland. This is a vote to allow pot shops within the city of West Richland. And taking a look at the results so far, it shows 56% of voters have said retail cannabis sales should not be allowed, while 44% voted to allow. Now for Benton County Fire District 2, it's hoping voters approve an increase to its regular property tax levy to $1.50 per 1,000 assessed valuation. And the results so far show 60% approve, while 40% have rejected the proposition. 
Now let's get to Benton County Commissioner District 1 that race. Jerome Delvin leading the vote count with 57% followed by Jeff J. Smart with 41%. In Benton County Commissioner District 3, Will McKay with the most votes at 69%, Zach Fluherty with 29%. Moving to Franklin County now, there's a county commissioner race for District 1. Stephen Bowman is in the lead with 53% of the vote. Caleb Atkins in second with 39%. Now here's Franklin County Commissioner District 2. 62% of voters have voted for Rocky Mullen, 38% for Blanche Barajas. Now let's take a look at Franklin County Fire District 3. It's hoping voters approve to increase its regular property tax levy to $1.28 per 1,000 assessed valuation. The majority so far voting against it. And thousands of ballots remain to be counted in the August primary. Over in Yakima County, Apple Valley News Now's Emily Goodell tells us initial numbers point strongly in favor of local measures. Highland Fire District, West Valley Fire and Rescue, and East Valley Fire District asking voters to approve levy lid lifts to fund emergency services and keep up with inflation. They need a simple majority, just over 50%, to pass. Initial results showing more than 60% of voters saying yes. Those are passing by such a large margin, I can't imagine that they would change. You know, the 10%, that's, that's a ton. Incumbents getting the majority vote for Yakima County Commissioner's District two and three, but the final decision won't take place until the general election. The closest race, voters saying yes or no to a levy that would support Sela Aquatic Center operations through 2025. It needs a supermajority, just over 60% to pass. The first batch of results coming in barely over the threshold at 60.02%. One thing about SELA is their drop box is heavily used, which all that, um, you know, is in the building to be counted, but, you know, we won't have all those through for a few days. The ask, seven cents per thousand dollars of assessed property tax value, adding up to about $21 a year for the owner of a $300,000 home. If it doesn't pass, Typically what happens when something like that fails, they usually regroup and then resubmit. But ballots are still being counted and the results won't be official until they're certified on August 20th. In Yakima County, Emily Goodell, Apple Valley News Now. And the latest count shows the vote for the SELA Aquatic Center levy coming in at 59% approval. We'll have more election results coming up at 5.30 this morning. Well, it's just about time for the kids to head back to school. College Place Public Schools is hosting a registration fair today for the 2024 to 2025 school year. You can drop by College Place High School, Davis Elementary or Sager Middle School today from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. to register your child. College Place Public Schools says this is also an opportunity to bring in proof of residence and student medical paperwork. Vaccinations required for the first day of school will be available at the event. And as students are heading back to college, a dedication ceremony is being held in two weeks for the opening of the Vandal Healing Garden and Memorial, which honors the memory of four University of Idaho students murdered in 2022. Students from the U of I designed and built the garden, which has been constructed to remember Kaylee Gonsalves, Madison Mogan, Zana Kernadal and Ethan Chapin. The dedication ceremony will be Wednesday, August 21st at 4.30 p.m. The memorial is located on McLean Field near the Physical Education Building. Coming up next on Good Morning Northwest, it's been one year since wildfires ravaged the island of Maui in Hawaii. We're taking a look back at this disaster, the worst of its kind in modern U.S. history. And Chief Meteorologist Josh Culberth will have your weather forecast. Good Morning Northwest will be back in just a moment. Why do you Goodwill? Well, there are countless reasons. Goodwill makes it easy to support my ongoing creative projects at home with their affordable items. To be environmentally friendly through upcycling, reusing, and recycling. For the chance to uncover brand new items at unbelievable prices. Goodwill means being economical with my money. With hundreds of reasons to shop at Goodwill, you can feel great about knowing 95.7 cents of every dollar you spend helps your community. Goodwill. Donate. Shop. Impact locally. Meet Fatbeam Fiber, the fastest growing fiber provider in the West. With over 150,000 fiber miles across 150 cities and eight states, we offer reliable internet and top tier service to business, government, healthcare, education, and residential customers. From dedicated internet access to wireless backup, 
Our team ensures 99.99% uptime and superior connectivity. Trust Fatbeam Fiber to expand network capabilities and protect your data. Discover more and request a quote at fatbeamfiber.com. Save through Monday with Hot August Specials in Bymart's latest savings book. Save $30 on a Winchester 18-gun cabinet, now just $149.99. PMC 556 62-grain ammo is just $9.99. Plus, buy more and save with digital rebates on Chevron 15W40 diesel oil. Buy 3 gallons and save $10. Buy 6 gallons and save $25. Store-wide savings through Monday with Hot August Specials only at Bymart. The Make It Ford Summer Sales Event is on. Amazing offers and a great selection of Ford vehicles like the Built Wild Bronco family with a deal you just can't miss. Your biggest adventures are waiting. So make it Ford. Make it yours. Make it now. Lease a 2024 Bronco Sport Big Ben for just $369 a month. Only at your local Ford dealer. I want that. Another morning to savor the crunchy nooks and cranny splendor of a Thomas's English muffin. Tom, which is a nook and which is a cranny? Well, that's a nook, cranny, 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 nook, cranny. I mean, they should be teaching you this in school. Huzzah! A toast to breakfast. Hey! Good morning, America. Good morning, America. Good morning, America. You don't just see it, you feel it. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in, too. I am in. I'm in. I'm in, too. I'll be here. <laughs> E.T. and Extra, tonight at 7 on Apple Valley News Now. From Apple Valley News Now, first alert weather with Chief Meteorologist Josh Colbreth. Welcome back to Good Morning Northwest. Just like with yesterday morning, it's a morning where we have temperatures in the 50s and 60s. So where we're in the 50s in places like Tri-Cities and Hermiston and Prosser, that's maybe where you would want a light jacket. But even in the low 60s, that might also warrant a light jacket. Okay, we have a light haze across a good chunk of the region, but where we're seeing the thickest surface smoke is immediately downwind of the retreat fire just outside of Titan. So really no surprise there. So if you live out this way, if you have to commute out this way, maybe having the N95 mask wouldn't be the worst thing on the planet, especially if you have a pre-existing respiratory illness. Now let's show you what happens with all the haze and the smoke for today. I think overall it's going to be a little bit lighter compared to yesterday. If you really want to split hairs, you can see these streamlines here. That represents the wind direction coming out of the north and east, which is going to bring a lot of dry air into the region, which is bad news. But I guess the little bit of good news is that it will thin out the smoke for a lot of us, especially in places like Benton County, Franklin County, and Walla Walla County. And then into tomorrow, the pattern is essentially the same. More, more winds coming out of the north and east, so it's going to continue to be pretty light haze for most spots, except for those areas immediately downwind of those those most active fires. We do have an air quality alert that's still in place for Yakima County until further notice. Not sure why Umatilla County is popping up on this map. There's no air quality alert there, but definitely in place for Yakima County. And I'll, I'll show you, you see today we're going to be pretty seasonal, maybe a few degrees above average for this time of the year, but I will show you how we cool off in the next week. That's going to be coming up in a few minutes. Thank you, Josh. Turning to more weather news from around the country, Tropical Storm Debbie has made a second U.S. landfall along the South Carolina coast. According to the National Hurricane Center, the storm is beginning to weaken and speed up. Early this morning, Debbie was located just northeast of Charleston, moving northwest at five miles per hour. The center of the storm should move into North Carolina and Virginia Thursday evening. Although the storm is weakening, residents in Franklin, Virginia are preparing. I will be paying attention as far as, um, you know, things in my yard and, uh, you know, trying to, you know, tack things down um, from blowing away and di different things. So hopefully nothing too bad, but we'll see, you know. Emergency officials with the city say they're expecting minimal flooding from this storm event with four to six inches of rain. They say they're making sure uh, gear like saws are on standby in case trees fall. Well, today marks one year since wildfires began devastating the Hawaiian island of Maui. It's the deadliest such disaster in modern U.S. history, killing more than 100 people. Hawaii Governor Josh Green says to honor them, he has ordered flags to fly at half staff. Officials say the flames left more than 3,000 families homeless. A year later, they say many still don't have permanent housing. 
The historic community of Lahaina remains devastated after it was largely wiped out. Up next on Good Morning Northwest, the days of sharing your Costco membership will soon be over. We have what the retailer will be soon implementing and when it's expected to go into effect. We'll be right back. It's the all new Apple Valley News Now weekend with local news, regional news, first alert weather and much more every Saturday and Sunday, including a complete wrap up Sunday night at 11. Apple Valley News Now weekend from Apple Valley News Now, always on your side. Hey, hey, Tri-Cities, it's Eric the Peanut Guy with your Tri-City Dust Devils. Join the fun at Giza Stadium this Friday, August 9th, as we indulge in a family feast night. $2 hot dogs, soft drinks, and more, thanks to the Tri-Cities Airport. Saturday, August 10th, your Dust Devils will play as the Vineros de Tri-City and end the game with a magnificent fireworks show, brought to you by IBEW 112 and Nika. Visit the official ticket site at DustDevilsBaseball.com. Dust Devils Baseball, it will blow you away. Live, Sunday, September 15th, it's the Emmys. Find out who wins the year's top honors. All right, I have to put this down. I still don't have the strength. Ah, zing. Oh, sorry about that. Sorry. When television's biggest night comes to ABC. I love this part. And the Emmy, the Emmy. The Emmy goes to... I'm a winner, baby! The Emmys, live Sunday, September 15th on ABC and next day on Hulu. Summer in our area usually means great weather. Hot days and warm evenings are the norm. But every so often, a storm moves in with dangerous wind, lightning, and rain. Count on Apple Valley News Now First Alert Weather to warn you in advance of coming storms. With First Alert Weather, we're helping you plan ahead so you'll be ready when the weather gets a little crazy. Stacy Lee Evenings, Josh Colberth Mornings. We're Apple Valley News Now First Alert Weather on your side. On your side. Always on your side. Joan, what are your like must-haves in a man? I'm very picky about a man being a gentleman, somebody who's generous, and also somebody who's humble. Whoever that guy is, we want you to be happy. Yeah. I want to propose a toast. Thank you so much for all your support. You guys have been the best family in the world. I'm not here to replace Dad. I just want our family to be whole again. Cheers to a great adventure. Next live. John Stamos from Unprison. That was a great session. Plus, fitness leader Mark Santa Maria. It's exactly. great. Today at 9 on Apple Valley News Now. Good morning, Northwest. Streams all day at AppleValleyNewsNow.com and our mobile apps. Welcome back to Good Morning Northwest and your health headlines. If a child is going to school for the first time, it can bring some challenges for both parents and children. According to Jody Baumstein, a licensed therapist, you can help your child by arming them with social skills. This by setting up play dates with other kids and also have them interact and practice talking to each other. Baumstein says to practice naming feelings since children often don't have the words to describe their emotions. Also, you can help them learn to ask for help, something they may not be experienced at doing with someone unfamiliar, like a new teacher. Also, teaching coping skills to help with different emotions. Losing their eyes, counting to 10, taking slow, deep breaths, using their senses to kind of bring them back and ground them in the present moment. These are things that can really calm the body, calm the mind. Baumstein says prioritizing good quality sleep and reducing after school screen time is also important and can make time for healthy things like physical activity and social connection. In more health headlines, the rate of stroke deaths among middle-aged Americans was the highest in two decades during the pandemic. That's according to a new report from the CDC. The report shows the, stro the stroke death rate for people ages 45 to 64 grew 7 percent from 2012 to 2019, and then it spiked another 12 percent in 2020 and 2021. Stroke deaths for this age group dipped slightly in 2022, but were still significantly higher than before the pandemic. 
Medical experts warn that middle age is an important time to manage risk factors such as high blood pressure, diabetes, and obesity. They say it's important to recognize stroke symptoms and get to the hospital as fast as possible. And according to the Mayo Clinic, strokes are often identified by the following symptoms. A sudden severe headache, vision problems, trouble walking, paralysis or numbness in the face or limbs, and also trouble speaking or understanding others. And now in consumer news, news for Costco customers, the days of using your friend's Costco membership card are over. Costco says it will start using scanning devices at store entrances where members will have to scan their card. So members will have to show a valid photo ID if their card does not have a photo. And the retailer says the scanning devices will be installed in the coming months. In more consumer news, Hyundai and Kia's latest anti-theft software update is showing positive results, although car thefts remain overall high. According to the Highway Loss Data Institute, insurance claims show stolen Hyundai and Kias are 64 percent lower among cars that have had the anti-theft upgrade. Now, last February, Hyundai and Kia released their updates following many social media posts that showed how easy it was to steal them. From early 2020 through the first half of 2023, thefts of Hyundai and Kias rose more than 1,000 percent. And according to the automaker, more than 2 million Hyundai and Kia cars have since gotten the update. Up next on Good Morning Northwest, we've heard all sorts of baby delivery stories, but this next story is about a Washington woman that delivered her baby on the ferry. Details when we come back. Hello, I'm Alan Brecky from Alan Brecky Law Office. Community safety has been our law firm's number one priority. We're a dedicated team of professionals committed to keeping our neighborhoods and other public places safe for everyone in the Tri-Cities and surrounding communities. Columbia Ability Alliance needs your support August 7th and 8th during the Giving Blitz. Your donations unlock matching sponsor funds, maximizing impact for those with disabilities and barriers. Text BLITZ to 44834 or visit ColumbiaAbilityAlliance.com slash BLITZ to donate. Hi, I'm Scott McGilvery. I know what bath remodels should cost because I've done hundreds of them. I use Bath Fitter in my investment properties because I know it'll be worth every penny and then some. After 40 years and over 2 million baths, they're accountable for everything from design to manufacturing to installation, all backed by a lifetime warranty. If you want a bath remodel you can trust with your money, it just fits. Bath Fitter. Go to bathfitter.com to book your free consultation. Meet Fatbeam Fiber, the fastest growing fiber provider in the West. With over 150,000 fiber miles across 150 cities and eight states, we offer reliable internet and top tier service to business, government, healthcare, education, and residential customers. From dedicated internet access to wireless backup, our team ensures 99.99% uptime and superior connectivity. Trust Fatbeam Fiber to expand network capabilities and protect your data. Discover more and request a quote at fatbeamfiber.com. The Y Card, a powerful resource for former Hanford and DUE employees. If you worked in the area and have come down with cancer, lung disease, Parkinson's, or renal failure, you may be eligible for financial compensation and health care services. A simple phone call can get the process started. Atomic Home Health. Don't wait. Call today. Usually when people knock on your doors, they're trying to sell you something, <laughs> but we're actually here to give you money. D Sama is this month's winner of Volunteers Count. We have fosters throughout the Tri-Cities. We have about um, 50 total. Um, and so my home is usually the home where all the animals come in to sort of do, you know, our intakes. STCU honors volunteers in our community. To nominate someone, click on Volunteers Count at applevalleynewsnow.com. While you're enjoying the rest of summer and getting ready for school and fall sports, be mindful of air quality. Also, traffic and water safety. Call us if you're in. Call 735-0546 to find out what your rights are under the law. Boating, fishing, and good times. Fly the Northwest. Apple Valley News Now at 6, Tuesday. From Apple Valley News Now, first alert weather with Chief Meteorologist Josh Colbert. Welcome back to Good Morning Northwest. You're taking a live look at a 
I'd say a pretty nice sunrise this morning. It was a little bit more pinkish and purpley just like five minutes back, but there are still some nice colors up in the sky. A lot of haze out there. There's going to be a lot of haze for today, but maybe a little bit less compared to yesterday. So for today, we'll still be about five degrees above average for this time of the year. The big difference with today is that winds are going to gust out of the north and northeast, bringing some very dry air into the region. And so they'll gust upwards of maybe 20 miles per hour. That would be for the lower Columbia Basin for the Yakima and Kittitas Valleys as well. And then for tonight, the wind should calm down. The haze and the smoke situation is going to stay the same. And overnight lows will be just about the same as this morning. Maybe a smidge warmer, but most of us should end up in the low to mid 60s. OK, into tomorrow. And by the way, for today, we're tracking a very small chance for a stray thunderstorm in the Cascades. For tomorrow, that chance is a little bit more widespread, spreading down into the Kittitas and Yakima Valleys, also for the mountain ranges. But models are suggesting that Saturday is likely going to be the most active day in terms of thunderstorm chances, especially for the Kittitas Valley, the Yakima Valley, and for the Cascades. But our overall pattern suggests more small, persistent thunderstorm chances even well into next week. So we'll track that fire star potential. But thankfully, fuels will be a little bit more relaxed just given that high temperatures will finally start to feel a lot better. Now, we'll be around 90 degrees still in the Tri-Cities. That's hot, but it's, it's not as close to 100 degrees, so we'll take it. Here's a seven day forecast for the Tri Cities. We'll have a hot and hazy set of days for Thursday and Friday, a small thunderstorm chance for Saturday, and much cooler by Monday. For Yakima, we'll be hot with haze today, a thunderstorm chance going up into Friday, especially into Saturday, and then we'll be down into the 80s by next week. For Hermiston, we'll be balmy and hazy for today and tomorrow, a small thunderstorm chance for Saturday, and those breezes picking up with some cooler temps by Monday. And then for Walla Walla, we'll be in the mid 90s and we'll be hazy for today and tomorrow. A straight thunderstorm is possible for Saturday, and then we have a nice cool down in store by Monday. Thank you, Josh. Check this out now. So what started out as a scary moment on a Washington State ferry turned into a joyful occasion. Yeah, a woman delivering her baby on board. Sebastian Robertson has the story. In his 26 years working on board Washington State ferries, <laughs> Captain Noah Lando says he can sense when something is not right. I could tell something was wrong. We weren't going to leave until we, we figured it out. Tuesday, just as they were about to pull away from Lopez Island due for Anacortes, word spread that a woman on board was going into labor. In my experience, almost always people come forth, doctors, nurses, uh, EMTs, and then, and then the crew, they just knew without being told to start moving cars around to make a, a space for the ambulance to back down. But before rescue crews arrived, the baby, this baby, had already been born. Arlo Trey Mack. Seven pounds, one ounce. Birthplace, Washington State Ferry. Welcome to the Washington State Ferry. Welcome news announced over the ship's PA system. She said, baby boy has just been born. And then there was just this loud cheer went up. Believe it or not, this is the second baby born on board a vessel Captain Landau is in command of. And the mother and baby are doing just fine. That's great. Scary. That was, uh, that's very scary. Yeah. I know when I was getting close to delivering my baby, I was not going anywhere. Would you I have was a panic attack if that was happening? Oh, I'd be oh. so scared. Oh. I wanted to be as close to medical professionals yeah. as possible. Same. Oh, mm -hmm. What a hero, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, up next on Good Morning Northwest at 530, in the race to the Attorney General's office, we have who is currently leading the vote, plus more election coverage. And what was expected to be a week-long mission for two Boeing Starliner astronauts has turned into over 60 days, and now officials are saying they might not be back until next year. We have the story, and we'll be right back, but first, here are your Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, YouTube possibly rolling out a new X-like feature. Reports say a pilot program is asking YouTube users to test a feature which can add notes to clarify misleading or inaccurate videos. The tool is similar to community notes on X. Next, Roku is launching a free 24-7 sports channel. The new channel will show live events and original content. Viewers can watch live MLB games, Formula E races, NBA G League games, and more for free on Roku devices and apps. It launches next week. And finally, the city of Jackson Hole, Wyoming has unveiled a wildlife safety 
safety Instagram filter. The open source filter lets visitors check if they're too close to animals by aligning animal outlines with icons in the app. Other wildlife destinations can also customize and use the tool. So now your picture of a wild hog won't be so boring. Those are your tech bites. A fan at a track meet spills jelly on her shirt. I bet Allison doesn't get jelly on her shirt. Allison on the track. <sighs> bet Noah Lyles doesn't get a smoothie on his jersey. Noah. Oh, come on. Bet Carl Lewis doesn't get tomato sauce on his jacket. Carl. Dang it. He spills chocolate sauce on his shirt. Stains happen to the best of us. When they do, Tide's got you covered. Pasta in Paris? When in Rome. Noah shrugs. It's got to be Tide. America's number one detergent. P&G. Rise, 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 and thrive. No pizza. You are bountiful. Your skeleton can support two times your weight. It's in your nature to stand strong. Supplement your bones with high absorption magnesium. Nature's bounty. It's in your nature. This is Apple Valley News Now. Good morning, Northwest. On your side. Good morning. Thank you for joining us for Good Morning Northwest. I'm Jessica Jalal. I'm Jill Sperling. And I'm Josh Colbert. All right, so today is What's International the other National okay, Well, Day. we talked about National Pickleball Day yes. earlier, but this is one that both of you will appreciate. It's International Cat Day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're meowing. <laughs> you need to get a cat. I know. We're Everyone keeps saying Jill that. I keep on saying I want a cat, but I do have a kid now, so that does take up a lot we'll of time and energy. Cat one day, a little right? bit Go. higher on the priority. <laughs> a little bit, so. yeah, for now. <laughs> <laughs> What's high on our priority list for weather, Josh? Yes. Heat. Uh, heat for today. Also, some smoky skies well, out the sky there. Well, the sky looks beautiful. But thankfully. You know, it's not the smokiest day we've seen. Also, it's not the hottest day we've seen this summer either. But we still, unfortunately, are in the dog days of summer, not the cat days of summer. So right now, you're taking a live look at Yakima. This view coming courtesy of Bimart, top the Atanum Ridge. Definitely not the worst air quality we've seen in the Yakima Valley since the start of the retreat fire. Temperatures this morning, either in the 50s or 60s, so I think most of us will probably need a light jacket, but you'll be able to shed that pretty quickly as a little bit later today will be about five degrees above average for this time of the year. So still right around 100. That is objectively very hot stuff. Okay, so the bottom line for the forecast moving forward is that we will have widespread haze, not only for today, but also for tomorrow as well, but maybe a little bit less compared to yesterday. Thunderstorm chances do return into Friday, likely peaking into Saturday. But on the back side of that, it looks like we have some cooler weather that is going to help us out with our fire fuels. But in the meantime, I'll show you just how dry our vegetation is for today, and I'll talk about that fire start potential, and that's going to be coming up in a few minutes. Thank you, Josh. We're turning once again to preliminary vote counts in the August primary. We've got the most recent numbers for a proposition from Fire District 4 in Walla Walla County. So far, the majority of voters are approving the property tax levy for fire protection and emergency medical services. As for a levied lid lift for Walla Walla Fire District 5, it's being rejected by 56% of voters so far. For County Commissioner District 1, Walla Walla County, Bertha Clayton leads the vote with 66%. Jenny Mayberry follows with 34%. A hot race is District 4. For U.S. Congress, Jared Sessler is in the top spot with 31% and incumbent Dan Newhouse with 24%. A reminder, the top two vote getters in each race will advance to the general election in November. To the Attorney General's race, current Pasco Mayor Pete Serrano is leading the vote count with 42 percent. Nick Brown is second with 35 percent. Now turning to the governor's race, two candidates have run away with it. Washington Attorney General Bob Ferguson in the lead with 45 percent of the vote. Dave Reichert has 28 percent. And while the ballots are still being counted, the Benton County Auditor's Office says it's full speed ahead to November. Apple Valley News Now's Monique Ledesma lets us know some of the work that still needs to be done. Benton County Auditor Brenda Chilton says 281 ballots are being challenged. Chilton says ballots get challenged when there are no signatures on the ballot or the signature doesn't match the signature on record. Another challenge reason? 
they didn't meet the deadline to submit their vote. Chilton says late votes won't be counted, but if you had a signature error, there's still time to make your vote count. We notify the voters and we let them know that they have an opportunity to cure that problem before the uh, certification of the election. Chilton says although some votes have been tallied up, not all are accounted for and until they are, it could still be a fair game for some races. We always say that there's always a possibility that the numbers can change from election night up until there's just not an, in, enough ballots left that it could sway one way or the other. Chilton says there's a certain percentage levies and bonds need in order to pass. So most bonds are 60% supermajority, uh, but le levy li lifts, and in particular the one that we had on our ballot last night, which was uh, Fire District 2, I believe, we generally defer to the districts to, you know, they, um, they make that final determination as to whether or not, based on the results of the election, it qualifies. Uh, but we do ask for that information from them ahead of time and their indication that um, the fire district 2 was a simple majority, meaning 50% plus one. Chilton says once everything for the primary election is finalized, it's all hands on deck to prepare for the next step. We'll begin preparation of uh, a number of things. Um, they'll start uh, programming and um, designing the ballot for the general election. They will uh, um, start assembling the information for the um, voters pamphlet. We do partner with the Secretary of State for in the statewide voters pamphlet for the general election. So our information, local information will be combined, combined with the state information for a, a combined voters pamphlet. Chilton says election season comes with a price tag to it. Well, elections aren't cheap. Um, a countywide election is running about a half a million dollars in Benton County. And so what happens is that cost is shared between all of the districts that have an election. Once you receive your general election ballot, Chilton says, the key to having your ballot count is to match your signature on your return envelope to that on your voter registration record. Reporting in Benton County, Monique Ledesma, Apple Valley News Now. And if you haven't registered to vote and want to vote in the general election, Chilton says you have up until Election Day in person at 8 p.m. And speaking of elections, the Benton County Elections Division is looking for volunteers. It's looking for volunteers for the upcoming November 5th special election, and it needs volunteers specifically for Benton County Fire District 2. BCFD2 is voting to authorize a six-year permanent levied lid lift, and those on the committee are to write measures for and against each measure. So committee members are also required to be registered voters of Benton County and be registered to vote in the district that they're seeking to be a committee member four. The committee will be responsible to draft arguments and at least one person must be willing to be listed as the contact person for the committee. The committee spokesperson's name and committee contact number will be printed in the voters pamphlet. Anyone interested should contact the division at 509-736-3085 and they have until 4.30 p.m. on Tuesday, August 13th. The Columbia Ability Alliance launched its first ever Giving Blitz yesterday. The organization has a goal of raising $50,000 in just 48 hours. The money will be used to help fund programs for people of all abilities in our communities. Program organizers say it's these types of programs that really help people live full lives. We'll work directly with area employers on job placement opportunities where some of our clients are working towards independent living and this giving helps support those programs. We have a program for community inclusion so we go out with our clients and they experience all the wonders of the Tri-Cities and beyond. This helps provide uh, resources for them to do that and funding to carry those programs forward. Less than 24 hours left to go now. Donations can be made through the event website or by texting BLITZ to 44834. An alleged terror plot targeting Taylor Swift's upcoming concerts in Austria has reportedly been foiled. On Wednesday, two suspected extremists were arrested in connection with the alleged terror plot targeting Swift's concerts in Vienna. The Associated Press is reporting that the alleged plot also included other major events in the area. Officials in Austria said the main suspect is a 19-year-old Austrian citizen. They believe he had pledged an oath of allegiance to ISIS. 
Authorities said they found chemical substances when he was taken into custody. Investigators are working to determine if they could have been used to build a bomb. At a news conference, authorities said they believe both men became radicalized on the Internet and confirmed that they had detailed plans on how to carry out an attack and Swift is set to perform on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday at the Ernst Happel Stadium for the international leg of the ERA's tour. Officials say they are stepping up security and that there are no plans to cancel those concerts. Now, what was expected to be a week-long mission for two Boeing Starliner astronauts back in the beginning of June has turned into a stay in space of more than 60 days. NASA astronauts Butch Wilmore and Sonny Williams, the first test flight crew of Boeing Starliner spacecraft, have now been in space for 63 days with no return date in sight. This as testing continues to find the root cause of issues Starliner had on the way to the International Space Station. The spacecraft suffered helium leaks and propulsion problems on the first leg of its flight. NASA announced Wednesday it's exploring several contingency plans. One would keep the astronauts on the ISS for another six months and a possible return could happen on a SpaceX vehicle. As of now, there is no clear date set for a return to Earth. And because of this, NASA is delaying the launch of SpaceX's Crew-9 mission to the ISS. Coming up next on Good Morning Northwest, for the first time in more than 20 years, the West Series is returning to Washington's Tri-City Raceway. Our very own Lucy Lobdell with that report. But first, Josh will have what you can expect in your weather forecast today. That's coming right up. Smoke City for less. We are open seven days a week with now five locations. The savings continue with Cascade Farm and Outdoors' latest mailer. Save $20 on a Coleman four-person Sky Dome tent, now just $49.99. Save on a Yoli Klamath Easy Lift 10x10 canopy. Purina Laying, a 40-pound crumble or pellet feed, is just $14.99. Plus, spring and summer apparel is up to 50% off. Find our latest mailer online or pick one up in-store today at Cascade Farm and Outdoor. Northwest. Homegrown. Honest Values. Hi, I'm Katherine Forner, and we love our own backyard so much, we built all of this. With hardwood decking and basilite pavers. And we just finished this deck for one of our best customers. With timber tech decking and fortress railing. And we get everything we need from PAR. With Shauna's help. Everything from design to delivery. What would we do without you? PAR, your total home building source since 1930. Go where the builders go. SCCU is pleased to support Apple Valley News Now's Restaurant Showdown. With more than 5,000 votes, we're down to the final four restaurants. The semifinal round of voting starts soon, so stay tuned. A big thank you to our sponsors, STCU, Les Schwab Tires, and Whitman Hill Winery. I have prepared a Thomas's breakfast for you to savor together. Thanks, Tom. Hey, are English muffins from England? Heavens no. They're from the pantry. Are you from England? Nay, I am also from the pantry. Huzzah! A toast to breakfast. Hey, hey, Tri-Cities. It's Eric the Peanut Guy with your Tri-City Dust Devils. Join the fun at Giza Stadium this Friday, August 9th, as we indulge in a family feast night. $2 hot dogs, soft drinks, and more, thanks to the Tri-Cities Airport. Saturday, August 10th, your Dust Devils will play as the Vineros de Tri-City and end the game with a magnificent fireworks show. Brought to you by IBEW 112 and Nika. Visit the official ticket site at DustDevilsBaseball.com. Dust Devils Baseball. Baseball. It will blow you away. An awesome flight over a lakeside community in northern Idaho. We have the beautiful lake right here, the bike trail, amazing businesses. Harrison. We have some of the most beautiful sunsets you'll ever see in your lifetime. Fly the Northwest. Apple Valley News Now at 6, Tuesday. Next ET counting down to it ends with us. We're with Lake Lively in full bloom. I did want her to come off like a, a delicate flower. Plus, onset of SEAL Team's final season, next ET. Tonight at 7 on Apple Valley News Now. I'm Press Your Luck. We make dreams come true. This is such a blessing. Oh, I'm crying. I'm so happy. Woo! Ethan, you have a problem. Get out of here. Press Your Luck, tonight on ABC. True or false, Lucky 13 is the number one new summer series. True. 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 I know it! You don't have to have skills to win bills.
From Apple Valley News Now, First Alert Weather with Chief Meteorologist Josh Colbert. Welcome back to Good Morning Northwest. We're seeing temperatures out there this morning that are pretty similar to what we saw just yesterday morning, 50s and 60s for Kittitas County. It's, uh, of course, a little bit warmer at the base of the county in Vantage. And then down into Yakima County, we're seeing a mixture of 50s and 60s as well. 61 for Yakima, 59 for Union Gap, 58 for Toppenish. So I'm thinking most spots will probably need some sort of light jacket for this morning. The same thing with the lower Columbia Basin, 62 for Benton City, 59 for Umatilla. And then for the foothills of the Blues, it's the same thing, 50s and 60s, although into the Blue Mountains, it's 40s and 50s. Okay, a little bit later today in the Tri-Cities, we're going to end up pretty close to 100 degrees. The high temperature is 98, so so it'll be a lot of t-shirt weather for today. Most spots will, will end up being about five degrees above average for this time of the year, so most spots will end up in the 90s. And now let's show you what's what that's going to end up doing to our vegetation dryness. So remember, the 100th percentile would be the driest fuels on record. So we're going to be up into the 90th percentile for most of Kittitas and Yakima counties, up into the 86th percentile for the lower Columbia Basin, and up into the 85th percentile for the Blue Mountains. And, and the air itself is going to be pretty dry, too, because we'll have winds coming out of the north and east, and, and that's going to bring our relative humidity values way down. Thankfully, we don't have much lightning in the forecast at all for today, but that will change into the weekend. I'll show you some of those thunderstorm chances coming up in a few minutes. Thank you, Josh. Well, for the first time in more than 20 years, the West Series is returning to Washington's Tri-City Wet Raceway. Our Lucy Lobdell has a preview. After more than four decades, NASCAR champion Greg Biffle will once again conquer the half-mile Trio Vol at Tri-City Raceway. Biffle, a West Coast Hall of Famer and one of NASCAR's top 75 drivers, will pay tribute to his Northwest roots this Saturday, August 10th, during the Napa Auto Care 150. The raceway says Biffle's return is a significant event for motorsport enthusiasts in our local community. His career has been marked by numerous achievements, including multiple NASCAR Series victories and a reputation for being one of the most skilled drivers in the short's history. This event offers fans a unique opportunity to witness a racing legend in action right in West Richland. Visit Tri-Cities and Greg's Ace Hardware helped to make this event happen. Also on Saturday night between 6.35 and 7.10 p.m., the raceway will be holding FanFest on the front stretch for all attendees that purchased a ticket. You'll be able to meet and greet the drivers, plus get autographs and pictures from your favorite drivers. Now, you will also have a chance to meet NASCAR legend Greg Biffle for autograph hero cards, but that's limited to the first 200 guests. Gates open at 4 p.m. with qualifying local divisions at 3.45. The main racing starts at 5.20 p.m. 7.30 p.m. is open ceremonies. Reporting for Apple Valley News Now, I'm Lucy Lobdell. And you can learn more about this weekend's event on our website, applevalleynewsnow.com. Up next on Good Morning Northwest, Washington State Patrol will soon be doing emphasis patrols as students return to college. We'll tell you when this is going to start, and here's a hint, it's very soon. Keep it here to find out. Find amazing deals store-wide during the extended anniversary sale at Furniture Row. Best of all, the more you buy, the more you save. Save 100 bucks on every thousand you spend. Or get 60 months no interest financing. The extended anniversary sale on now at Furniture Row. I'm Eduardo Morphine. Morphine Law Firm thanks you for five years of support. Remember, when choosing an attorney, select a local attorney that supports your local community. Columbia Ability Alliance needs your support August 7th and 8th during the Giving Blitz. Your donations unlock matching sponsor funds, maximizing impact for those with disabilities and barriers. Text BLITZ to 44834 or visit ColumbiaAbilityAlliance.com slash BLITZ to donate. Phones were made to help us connect, yet somehow they've made us less connected. Which is ironic, don't you think? We try to put our phones down, but we need to pick them up to see the menu. We can't watch something without also watching something else. Ironic. Ironic. But look, here's a phone company who wants you to use your phone less. That's ironic. Yeah, but in a good way. Let's find us again with Us Mode. U.S. Cellular. Built for us. Traffic jam. Ugh, and I'm already late. It's the all-new Apple Valley News Now weekend. With local news, regional news, first alert weather, and much more every Saturday and Sunday, including a complete wrap-up Sunday night at 11. Apple Valley News Now weekend from Apple Valley News Now, always on your side.
Apple Valley News Now forecaster Stacy Lee. While many things in life change, one constant is the accuracy of our forecast. Apple Valley News Now Chief Meteorologist Josh Colbreth. This summer, whatever your plans, we'll help you make the most of each day. Because at Apple Valley News Now First Alert Weather, accuracy matters. Stacy Lee evenings, Josh Colbreth mornings. We're Apple Valley News Now First Alert Weather on your side. On your side. Always on your side. Yakima's rockin' as Apple Valley News Now welcomes downtown summer nights each Thursday through August 22nd. Music, food, drinks, a kid zone, and so much more. Plus, I'll be live August 15th. So join me for downtown summer night. Find amazing deals store-wide during the extended anniversary sale at Furniture Row. Best of all, the more you buy, the more you save. Save 100 bucks on every thousand you spend. Or get 60 months no interest financing. The extended anniversary sale on now at Furniture Row. Watch live with Kelly and Mark weekdays at 9. From Apple Valley News Now, first alert weather with Chief Meteorologist Josh Colberth. Welcome back to Good Morning Northwest. You're taking a live look at the Columbia Point camera where you're seeing some haze up in the sky and we'll continue to have more of that throughout today. But if you really want to split hairs, maybe today is going to be a little bit less hazy as opposed to yesterday. Okay, so for today, it's going to be sunny, although we will have clouds building throughout the day. Of course, we already touched on the haze, and it's going to be about 5 degrees above average for this time of the year. Most of us ending up in the 90s, so it will be a hot one. And by the, by the way, winds gusting out of the north and northeast for today, that's going to bring some very dry air into the region. And then for tonight, the smoke and the haze situation should stay the same. Winds calming down, and overnight lows only dropping into the low to mid-60s for most spots. We will, by the way, I should mention that for today, we have a very small chance of a thunderstorm up in the Cascades. That could trickle down into the Kittitas and Yakima Valley for Friday, also for the Blue Mountains. And then for Saturday, it looks like models are coalescing around Saturday as being the most favorable day for thunderstorm chances, specifically for the Cascades, Kittitas Valley, and Yakima Valley. So we will be watching the fire start potential very closely, especially for Saturday. But after that, the pattern stays the same. We'll continue to have these persistent small thunderstorm chances in the forecast. Thankfully, on the other side of that, we'll start to trend much cooler. We'll be down to around 90 degrees in the Tri-Cities. Yes, 90 is objectively still hot, but it's actually going to be below average for this time of the year. So that's going to be a nice little switch up. Here's the seven-day forecast for the Tri-Cities. We'll be hot and hazy for both today and tomorrow. A small thunderstorm chance for Saturday and much cooler by Monday. For Yakima, hot with haze for today. A thunderstorm chance going up for Friday, especially into Saturday, and then down into the 80s by next week. For Hermiston, we'll be balmy and hazy for today and tomorrow. A small thunderstorm chance for Saturday, and the breezes will be picking up with cooler temperatures by Monday. And then for Walla Walla, we'll have mid 90s in haze for today and tomorrow, a stray thunderstorm possible for Saturday, and a nice cool down expected by Monday. Now, the morning sprint. Time is 5.52. Time to get to your morning sprint in our 5 o'clock hour. We're going to take you right to your 6 o'clock hour. First up, here are the top five local stories you need to know this morning. The teen accused of gunning down a man in a parking lot in Ellensburg has been arrested. 18-year-old Benny Castizo is charged with first-degree murder after police say he fatally shot 21-year-old Christian Guthrie back in March. It happened in the parking lot of a Jack in the Box restaurant near the CWU campus. Authorities say Castizo has been on the run since but was taken into custody to Tuesday in Kent. Tri-Cities commuters can expect some delays this morning if traveling along I-182 in Richland. Roadway repairs will be happening today. Crews with the Washington Department of Transportation will be closing lanes between milepost 5 and 7 near George Washington Way and eastbound I-182 from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Drivers should plan to add extra time to their commute. If you or your child is heading off to college, make sure to drive safe. The Washington State Patrol is doing emphasis patrols to August 9th tomorrow through August 18th as students return to college. There will be a heavier presence of state troopers on the roads in Kittitas and Grant counties over the next few weeks. They'll be focusing on speeding, distracted driving and DUI.
And today is the day two of the Columbia Ability Alliance's 48 hour giving blitz or day two, excuse me. It's a campaign to raise money for programs for people with disabilities and or job barriers. The goal is to raise $50,000 and if you would like to help out, donations can be made through the events website or by texting blitz with a Z to 44834. Votes are still being counted in Tuesday's primary election. The top two vote getters in each race will advance to the general election in November. Among the choices on the ballot was Washington's governor, attorney general, and a number of local propositions. We've got the latest results on our website, applevalleynewsnow.com. Turning to national news now, Tropical Storm Debbie has made a second U.S. landfall along the South Carolina coast. The National Hurricane Center says the storm is beginning to weaken and speed up. The center of the storm is expected to move into North Carolina and Virginia Thursday evening. Debbie is expected to move into interior New York by Friday evening. It will bring heavy rainfall to the northeast on Friday, and what's left of Debbie should move out of New England by Saturday late morning. In more national news, world leaders are working to prevent the Israel-Iran tension from escalating. The Organization of Islamic Cooperation held a meeting yesterday to address ongoing Israeli-Palestinian conflict. It was held in Saudi Arabia and comes as the U.S. and other nations have repeatedly called for a de-escalation of the conflicts. The OIC condemns the assassination of Hamas leader Ismail Haniyeh and is holding Israel responsible. An international health alert this morning about a deadlier strain of MPOX spreading in Africa. The World Health Organization says the illness, formerly known as monkeypox, has spread from the Democratic Republic of Congo to Burundi, Kenya, Rwanda and Uganda. Four countries that had not previously reported cases and the CDC is urging doctors here in the United States to keep an eye out for MPOX in people who recently traveled from the Democratic Republic of Congo or bordering countries. And in case you missed the baseball game yesterday, the Seattle Mariners lost to the Detroit Tigers 6-2. The Tigers secured the series win and dropped Seattle to 59-56 on the season, although there will be one more game tonight. Check this out now. The San Diego Zoo held a special private event yesterday to give attendees a sneak peek at a pair of Chinese giant pandas. Oh, I love this. So <laughs> what makes these pandas special? Well, they're the first to enter the United States in 21 years. Yun Chuan and Xin Bao arrived in June, but up until now, they've just been getting used to their new home. The zoo is working closely with Chinese experts to aid in the adaptation period and the understanding of the needs of the two pandas. The new Panda Ridge exhibit will be open to the public today. Okay, I love pandas. They pandas are, just, are so, so cute. Funny. The funniest videos of them just falling. No, I know. You know not to be mean or anything. They look so but clumsy. They're, just, like, they're having fun while yeah. they're falling. I love it. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> <laughs> well, up next on Good Morning Northwest at 6, we'll have more on the results from the Washington primary, including an update on the district commissioner races. Plus, a famous rap producer is giving back to the community, to single moms specifically. We have what he recently announced in our 6 o'clock hour. And also, I'll have a look at that first alert forecast and a roundup of all the fires, including a new one on the edge of Yakima County. That's going to be coming up at 6.